I've been wanting to talk to you about natural consequences and just last night Victoria gave us the perfect opportunity and I managed to catch it on video. So, <laughs> so today I wanted to share with you what natural consequences are, how to implement them in real life and give you some real tangible examples and actually a walkthrough of what that looks like because I think the art in this is not just knowing what they are but then having the judgment and the understanding of when is the best time to use this in real life? So uh, let's get started. Welcome to Learning with Love, where you'll find modern solutions to common parenting challenges. Here you'll find actionable, practical, and well-researched solutions that hopefully will support you in your journey to be the kind of parent that you want to be. I hope you'll like our video and consider subscribing to our channel for more parenting tips. Today we're talking about natural consequences. And the first thing to understand is really what is a natural consequence. A natural consequence is actually when a parent does nothing. Natural consequences are the natural, organic result of a child's actions. And learning from natural consequences is the way that children absorb lessons from the real world and use it to change their behavior and who they are. In this day and age, there is a tendency towards more intervention in parenting and to a lot of rescuing, sometimes helicopter parenting, sometimes jumping in and saving children from the natural consequences of their action. And of course, that's necessary sometimes. There are times when you have to jump in. We're gonna talk about when to make that judgment call. But what is it? It's just letting nature take its course and letting the natural results of a child's actions happen to them. A logical consequence, in contrast, is something that I want to bring up, which is a little bit different. A logical consequence is when a parent puts in a disciplinary response that makes sense and is sort of similar to a natural consequence, but usually speeds up the timeline for which a child would understand the results of their actions. There are a lot of things that have delayed consequences and in order to make children understand those better, we'll sometimes implement a logical consequence. I don't want to talk about logical consequences today, although I do want to touch on that in a separate video. Today, I really want to talk about natural consequences, what they are, how they're, the, in my opinion, the best teaching tool, and when to let those play out. The question is, why would you want to use a natural consequence? Why not try to teach a kid a lesson in a more proactive, human-directed way? And the reason is, of course, because natural consequences are the way the real world operates. That's how things happen. So the classic example of a natural consequence is a child deciding they don't want to wear their coat to the park. And if you've been a parent for very long at all, you've probably already encountered this, unless you live someplace warm. Um, a natural consequence is telling the kid, okay, fine, you don't have to wear your coat, and then letting them suffer the consequences, which is generally being cold at the park. What happens then is they suffer a negative response as a result of those actions, right? Being cold is not comfortable. And instead of having another person tell you, well, gee, you should have done that, instead, you're getting just the world's response to your actions, which is the feeling of being cold. And those lessons actually tend to affect children better they tend to promote more changes in their behavior in the future, and they tend to um, really help children have the beginning of the thought processes that help them plan through their actions. Now, children don't have full frontal cortex development yet, so they can't think through a lot of things, but they can think through some simple cause and effect reactions, and giving them the opportunity to do that with natural consequences is great. And natural consequences can start from under one years old. You know, the classic touching a stove and seeing that it's hot, that's a natural consequence. Um, so children that are very, very young, when a child stumbles and falls and skins their knee, they are learning from a natural consequence. And there are definitely times when you want to allow that process to happen. And I think that makes your parenting journey easier and I think it helps make them much more competent little people. My favorite part of a natural consequence is that it flips me from being in the position of an adversary into an ally, right? So if I'm giving a punishment for something and saying, you shouldn't do this, and I'm making something bad happen because of what they did, 
well, I'm the bad guy. I have to be the bad guy who tells them to brush their teeth or go to bed or stop doing something fun. But in a situation of a natural consequence, what happens is, let's say the child forgets their coat. Well, instead of saying, you have to put on your coat, which of course puts you in the position of the bad guy, if you instead go with them to the park when they have no coat, then you get to put your arm over their shoulder and say, oh, I'm really sorry that you feel so cold and that um, you're so uncomfortable. And you can be genuine in that, right? It's not fun and, and you feel for them for being cold. And resist the urge too much to say, I told you so, you should have brought your jacket, right? What you want to do is actually be in the position of their ally, show real empathy for the toughness of for the difficulty of their situation. But then you can also draw the connection for them and say, well, you know, how do you think you could prevent this next time so that you're not uncomfortable again? And let the child reach their own conclusions about how they might be able to prevent that situation from happening in the future. When we are telling children to do things they don't want to do, um, that does hurt our connection with the kids. And, and it's a necessary part of parenting and it's a good one. We can draw from a lot of our wonderful, loving relationships with our kids to, to do some of the things that are in their best interest but aren't relationship building with them. But in this case, when we allow the natural consequence to take place, in many ways we can actually build our relationship with them and we certainly don't um, cash in on that relationship when we do that. So that is great. So now I'm going to give you the example of the situation that happened yesterday with Victoria. Perfect example. So um, she's in the car and she takes her shoes off on a five minute drive. And uh, if you've had kids that are two, you may have seen this phase before. All of my children went through it where they take off their shoes as soon as they get in the car. As a mom, it is maddening. It drives me crazy. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> so, and so what do you do? How do you handle this? So the first thing you do is you set clear expectations. Well, she's definitely heard me say before, please don't take your shoes off in the car. And I will lay out that explicitly, please don't take your shoes off in the car. You need to even lay out the consequence of the action. Please don't take your shoes off in the car because then you won't have any shoes on when you get where we're going. Now for a two year old, that's a bit much, but this is where the rubber meets the road and the real experiences teach more than I can say. So we get to our destination, she has no shoes on, and here's what's happening. I'm not in a rush, I don't have to be somewhere right then, um, it's not too cold or too hot, I'm not in an unsafe situation. So I decide in this case to pluck her out of the car with no shoes onto slightly rocky, uncomfortable ground, but nothing that's going to hurt her, but just it, it'll be uncomfortable. And she was very unhappy about that, and she cried. And I said, well, let's go into the house. And she goes, I want to put my shoes on. And I said, okay, put your shoes on. And so first she said, I can't put my shoes on. And I said, well, why don't you give it a try? And she cried for a minute. <laughs> and this, parents, is absolutely the moment of truth. Because if you give in on that first moment of crying, and the urge is to do it is strong. We don't want to see our kids upset. And that comes from a good place. And we want to stay connected to that. And there are times when you do need to jump in. But this one was one where I could see that the connection was probably going to be made here. So I say, I don't jump in. I don't save them. I let her cry. She probably cried for maybe one minute before she figured out she could get her shoes on and she stuffed them on her little feet. And then she was very proud of herself. And you could see the moment of, of triumph as she jumps up and runs into the house. Okay, go ahead. Okay, keep trying. Get your footy in it. You did it! Nice! And that is gold right there. It's the working through a little bit of frustration. It's the feeling of competence of having accomplished what she set out to do, which in this case was put her shoes on her feet. And it's the resolution of the problem. But it was also 
definitely something of an uncomfortable experience, which I'm hoping that it was a slightly uncomfortable experience because I'm really hoping that she keeps her shoes on the next time we're in the car. So um, check down in the comments and I'll report back and see if, uh, <laughs> see if it took just one lesson and we'll see if Victoria managed to keep her shoes on. The hardest part of natural consequence, as I mentioned before, is knowing when to implement them. You cannot do it when your child is in actual danger. That is not okay, right? So I would never let a natural consequence be so severe that it was incredibly damaging or cause big uh, future damage. What you want is for the natural consequence to cause a small amount of suffering and discomfort to help prevent bigger discomfort in the future. So uh, a fall down a one foot step, perfect. That's gonna be the amount that they're gonna, you know, they'll bounce, they'll feel uncomfortable, um, but that may very well save their life off a large cliff later on. So you want to, them to have small, not very dangerous situations to practice the natural consequence on. You want to help them draw the connection, draw the logical connection between their action that they could have done differently and the natural result, but you don't wanna shame them wagging your finger at them saying, gee, I told you so, that's why you should listen to me and put your jacket on, then you are now in the role of being the adversary. Now it's about you versus them as opposed to them versus the world or the situation. And that's really how you want to frame it. It's them versus the world in this situation and really you're on their team, which is a good depiction of how it should be and how I think you want to be viewed with your child. You do want to set clear expectations before you go into it. So clearly outlining, this is what you'll do, this is my suggestion, this will be the result or the likely result, that's great. Line it up beforehand and then let the child make their choice if you are in a position with the time, availability, and again, it's not particularly dangerous. Timing is important for the natural consequence. It has to come close in time to their choice that they made. Um, for little kids, for children under one year old, it needs to be 30 seconds to a minute or less. It has to be very quick connection for their brain to understand and make the connection between their action and the outcome. For a two year old, maybe five minutes. Um, for an eight year old, a lot more. And, and for you know a teenager, it can be weeks. But providing an outcome that happens a day later for a three year old is not going to be developmentally appropriate. So that is not a situation in which you should try to use that method of teaching. You want to allow situations like this to occur when the natural consequence occurs within a very short time frame from the child's decision that causes the natural consequence to happen. Natural consequences are my favorite teaching tool because they really are not only a reflection of how the real world works, but they really are the real world working in action. And to me, that's how I value teaching my children. I, I see myself as a um, supporter with them in their journey as they navigate the world. So allowing the world to teach them its lessons in a way that are not too harmful, hopefully will create really competent, solid people. And that's also where the, the basis of a lot of self-esteem and feeling of self-confidence comes from because they feel confident in their ability to handle the world. There is no greater gift that you can support your child in developing than that, in my opinion. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give us a like, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Learning with Love.